Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys for Socks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And holy crap, us Alibaba shareholders and bag holders, of which Dylan and I are both one, actually have a good week. It's amazing. We're going to talk about the new story that moved the Alibaba stock this week and how it may spell fantastic things for the future of Alibaba shareholders. Get to it. <laughs> Two stupid guys trade stocks. <sighs> I mean, I should have zoomed out in this graph. Good week is a funny thing to say. <laughs> it's... Okay, okay, you know, we may be living in like solitary confinement in like an absolute dungeon somewhere. We finally found like a couple of saltine crackers that the mice didn't get to. That's our our good week. That's better. <laughs> there we go. Because this is horrible. All right. So here's what he's talking about. Let me move my face so you can see volume. Decent volume. It came back down anyways, though. Yeah. So what happened? There's a couple things. So one, Alibaba, Alibaba co-founders buy more than $200 million worth of shares. Um, that is Jack Ma and Joe Tsai. Is that how you say it? Joe Tsai? I believe so. Yeah. All right. So basically, Jack Ma stepped back. He was the one who condemned China, then disappeared for like a long time in a completely non-sketchy way, and then released a video <laughs> that was incredibly sketchy of him being okay. Um, and then uh, Jill's die is still leadership. But here's what yeah, they chairman still. Yeah, here's what they actually did. So Jack Ma bought fifty million dollars in Hong Kong stock, and Joe Tsai bought one hundred and fifty-two million in American depository shares, which if you're in the U.S., that's what we're buying. So mm. he bought those, and then Jack Ma bought it on the Hong Kong stock exchange. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't realize that they had two different kind of types of holdings that they acquired. I knew it's new that they had both bought it. It's a yep. chunk of shares there. Um, you know, it's part of this is an Alibaba problem, um, and that certainly adds to the confidence of Alibaba. But if you're looking at this overall performance, look at this. This is a five-year chart of the Hang Seng Index down 42% over five years. I'd be hard pressed to go back and look at a time in the US history where the US S&P 500 was down 40% over a five year period. Like I'm, I, it probably has happened, but it's a very rare event. Um, there was even a data point about how the, was it the, the price to earnings multiple for the Hang Seng index is now below the price to book multiple for, for like US indexes. Good. <laughs> like okay. absolute Jeez. insanity and in how cheap these are, at least on paper. Yeah, but the, um, the problem is there's also like geopolitical concerns of that, right? Because all of a sudden China has like a weird blend of capitalism and communism. And then all of a yes. sudden they shut down a little bit of that capitalism aspect and got involved. So Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the talking point here behind why Alibaba stock has had now an additional kind of buoy a little bit for the last uh, few days is that the Chinese government has announced maybe a softening and a stimulus for the Chinese economy. The Chinese economy is very unique and it's been facing a lot of issues that are unique to them and they felt more so than anyone else. Um, but basically they're saying uh, starting February 5th here that the People's Bank of China has lowered the reserve ratio for Chinese banks by 1%, meaning that, I want to say, I think the number was like $120 billion in stimulus that that would have provided to the Chinese economy, allowing Chinese banks to issue another like $120 billion in loans. What, what China is really facing... Is it 120 billion yen? U.S. It's about 1 trillion yuan. Okay, that makes one. a difference. They, they're they having quite a few issues. If you want to go to the next slide here, um, this is a little out of date, but if you look right beneath where Dylan is, that right there is the kind of flatlining you've seen of the Chinese government uh, or economy over the last couple of years. They did just report a 5% growth or 5.2% growth for the uh, 2023. So they did have a little bit of positive increase there. But if you look at the steepness of this chart here before, you know, you're talking a almost vertical line that they were having, and now they've had to slow down in terms of their economy growth. Now, when we go to the next section here, we're talking about Chinese prices. And if you notice that both the CPI and PPI on this chart have dipped below zero. So you know what that's called when, when those price indexes go below zero? Deflation? Yeah, just deflation. I don't know if I trust these numbers from China. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that That is indeed an entirely separate issue. Uh, I think everyone has a little bit of uh, distrust for uh, Chinese data. There was that 
tidbit about them reporting youth unemployment rate and then when it gets to like 20 percent, they just stopped reporting it they recently started reporting it again you know they said that they they were recalculating the way it was reported i don't know what the new number is now but it, it's something that's barely come back to public that uh i want to go to the next slide sketchy at all but this Still one's an interesting thing. highlight of how different their experience has been over the last few years in terms of monetary policy um look at china being the outlier compared to the rest of the world you know, whereas the rest of the world is facing you know a massive wave of inflation, and now we've you know getting towards the tail end of that. Um, China's been facing this steady like you know heading towards deflationary you know little slog, and they they've yet to have a major pivot uh, the way that you're seeing the rest of the world coming away or putting in this post-inflationary period. So I'm calling bullshit on this um, yeah. by a lot. Two reasons: okay. one, you're telling me. COVID, like where it all started, didn't happen at all. They literally, sh they had a hard shutdown. They shut mm -hmm. down. I know that people were like saying like California and like New York had to shut down. China's lasted forever. People just mm -hmm. didn't talk about it. They lasted a long oh. time. And then on top of that, you have an entire pending real estate collapse with what's the mm -hmm. place. There's no way this is real. This is that this is, they haven't had inflation. Yes. It, it, so... You know what's funny though is I, I actually do believe that. The what? reason I'll tell you why in the comments. I'll, I need someone to back me up. I yeah, highly disagree. No, I'll, I'll tell you why. The it's not the problem uh, that originally happened that caused the inflation. It was our response. It was the Western world's response that caused inflation. It was the massive money printing, which is what China mm -hmm. hasn't done. And China also how, how, pegs wait. their currency to the US uh, US dollar. So they've had to mirror our interest rates. In order to keep from their currency coming depegged and them having to, uh, you know, interfere in markets significantly in order to control that, um, so they've been fighting a very different battle than the rest of the world has been over the last couple of years. How? Yeah, but that's all taking them at their word that they didn't print. There's no way. So there are things you can track that are independent of them, like for instance, exports. Um, exports were actually negative for them last year. Uh, they had a negative like, growth or, or year over year uh, from an export standpoint. And then the rest of the world can corroborate that. You, know, you can certainly see that there's okay. not as much demand for, for goods being produced there. Um, and the way China has stimulated their, their economy in the past has been to focus on loans for manufacturing, making manufacturing cheaper. So now they have an excess of manufacturing and people are no longer buying as much of their products internationally. So now they have this kind of internal competition that's going to be head towards lower and lower prices. So that's why they're having this deflationary issue. It's very unique. Right. I'm uh, just to be clear, this is the same country who also said they had like a thousand COVID cases for like a very long time and then just got rid of all the quarantine centers are like, no, that's not real. Even all the footage yeah. you see, it's not real. No, it's fine. We have like no cases here. We're going to lock for like a year though, but we have no cases. Yeah. I, I think where how do I put this? So for me personally, I, I, I do believe them in some of the problems that they're facing. However, what I think they, the kind of disconnect between what I would perceive as like the answer and what they do as a solution is the major difference. Um, they have, they're just maybe now starting to turn out a little bit of stimulus. I mean, the U S government printed trillions of dollars in a matter of like, you know, a few months, <laughs> And they're mm -hmm. talking about uh, the market was excited about 120 billion dollar like stimulus uh, to the, to the you know, the Federal Reserve that that is what like uh, was le less than a month and a half of, of bond buying. I don't think the mar I think the market was more excited when you look at the timing of the jump. I think it was more excited about Jack Ma and Cy buying. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm just saying this is something that we could see as a pivot. This could, could eventually become like a tailwind. And get us back out of these doldrums of the seventy dollar. I'm, I'm talking shit about China as I have like thirty grand invested in Alibaba. <laughs> so I, mean, yeah. it's... I know, right? like you know, we're, we're major international players here. Um, but you know, the, the only reason I put this last chart in here is this is showing saving savings rates for for Chinese households. Um, and when you have a deflationary environment, right? So like theoretically, if, if I have a dollar today and tomorrow I can buy. You know, a service, the same service for only 98 cents, it makes sense for me to hang on to my cash more, right? And that's what you're seeing here is that the savings rates for Chinese households has gone up and up and up over the last few years. This is yeah. also supporting that deflationary kind of pricing going on over the last few years. So 
and a lockdown, right? Because you couldn't go out and spend money as freely as you did. Whereas when, in the Western world, when we saw the lockdown end, everyone booked uh, cruises and flights to all over the world, right? As yeah, we did do that. We 100%. We, that. Yeah, I think Cruise Lines had like their, their biggest year, like immediately after. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a good point. Um, let us know in the comments what you guys think. I don't trust anything China says. But for I hope Vinny's right, because I would very much like Baba to not be where it's at. So, yep. Totally agreed. Catch you in the next one.